I want to go across live and exclusive at this time to one of India's most famous aerospace scientists. He was at ISRO, contributed very significantly to India's space program, uh, developed the Vikas rocket engine, de built the team, led the team that developed the polar satellite uh, launch vehicle, the PSLV, on which the GSLV ultimately then got built. Uh, Nambi Narayan joins us. Many of you would know him as the inspiration behind the movie Rocketry, the Nambi Effect. We just had our Madhavan with us on this broadcast. Uh, he was wrongly accused of uh, being involved uh, in illegal activities. Later, the case completely dismissed against him. He's seen success, he's seen hardship, and now he's seeing this massive moment of the Indian Space Research Organization landing successfully on the moon. Uh, thank you very much, Nami Narayanji, for joining us in India today. Many congratulations to you and to India's scientific community. Could you start by explaining to everyone the significance in that journey which you've seen from the PSLV to now, this moment when the Vikram has landed on the moon? You know, how significant an achievement do you see this as being? <laughs> it's a long story. I, I feel it will be taking a lot of time. But uh, let me try to be as brief as possible. I remember those days uh, when I joined ISRO. Uh, one of the occasions which I can never forget is that I was carrying the Judy Dot payload, which looks like a small uh, rocket, by the Kerala State Transport Corporation's bus, because uh, we never had any vehicle. Uh, so from one place to another place, from the from a workshop which was fabricated there and then carrying it uh, to the uh, Tumba rocket station. And uh, of course there are occasions where we carried uh, these materials by bicycle and uh, so on and so forth. That was one day, that was, I'm talking about 1966 time frame. But then step by step we were struggling to make uh, a three inches diameter solid rocket motor that is one problem. Then a 600 kg, see a 300, uh, a 3 inch diameter rocket became later today a 3 meter diameter rocket and a 600 kg liquid rocket has become a 60 tonner Vikas engine. Now that is a kind of development which took place. Now at this occasion, uh, this is the long and short story of a development which take place over a period of 20-30 uh, years. But then we are recalling, at least at least I as an individual who happened to work with the big stalwarts of ISRO, Dr. Sarabhai, uh, who had dreamt of so many things. Unfortunately, he died uh, very young, uh, and uh, that is a misfortune of not only ISRO, but also the country. Then Dr. Uh, Sadish Daman, who was uh, instrumental for today's uh, PSLV, GSLV programs, he is the one who had uh, drawn the blueprint for these programs. And then Professor Yuar Rao who gave life to this blueprint. And uh, today you are getting all these hardwares due to the great service of Professor Yuar Rao. Now, this is the long and short story of ISRO. Okay. Now, the Chandrayaan Mangalyaan, these were uh, attempted, attempted with a small arcades available with us. And uh, the result was you had Chandrayaan 1 successful. Chandrayaan 2 was a failure. Now, today's Chandrayaan 3, we succeeded very greatly. And thanks to the hard work and intelligent work done by the ISRO team. Okay? I hope it is a... Spend a moment, Nambi Narayanji, talking about what happens next. Over the next few hours with the Pragyan coming out of uh, the Vikram lander, can you explain to everyone watching at this moment the kind of experiments that will be carried out, what we hope to achieve and why what India is doing on the South Pole of the Moon is indeed so special? Well, this is, uh, this is not a uh, difficult job, but I'll tell you it is uh, going to allow the whole dust to settle for about, I think it's about three to four hours or so. And then uh, the lander, uh, the Bikram, this will come out of the lander. That will roll down for a distance of about 100 meters. I, I, I don't remember those numbers. And um, it has its own experiments designated to it. But more frankly, let me tell you, uh, I got 
uh, completely overwhelmed by the fact that we had a soft landing. And that was the prime goal of today's launch. And after soft landing, what is happening is not really very exciting to me in the sense that uh, the, the main goal is achieved and we are now talking about subsidiary goals. So let, let the subsidiary goals take its own uh, way of getting things done. So that's why I okay. say that... My okay, colleague Shiv Arur has a question for you, yes. Dr. Narayan. Uh, sure. Nambiji, you know, the, 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 the scary part about yeah. the landing, uh, you know, which was weighing on everybody's mind, of course, was the memory of what had happened four years ago, uh, you know, with Chandrayaan 2. And, uh, you know, people tend to see these things as black and white, you know, failure versus success, when it was actually the many lessons that were learned from Chandrayaan 2 that helped Chandrayaan 3 in many ways become fail-proof. Can you tell us a little bit about that process, sir? How would the team have looked at Chandrayaan 2 and made Chandrayaan 3 that much more successful? Well, again, I will try to be brief. Uh, Chandrayaan 2 had, uh, shall I say, some built-in problems. And one was uh, a problem of the software where, uh, I, I, if I tell you that it was uh, there in the program, that it had contradictory commands. And one needs to say go, one needs to say not go. Another problem was the stability margin. And the stability was uh, not proper because we had a very stringent weight budget with respect to uh, Chandrayaan 2's uh, lander. Now, these are the two problems. Now, these two problems were addressed too. And there came handy the orbiter which was part of Chandrayaan 2 was still orbiting there with a life. Uh, which we never anticipated will be there when Chandrayaan 3 was being planned, but it has come a handy, which means we need not carry one more orbiter with us. So we were planning to use the present orbiter and then we also uh, gained some weight because we are not carrying that orbiter. So we wanted to make use of that weight gain in favor of us by adding some weight to the lander are making it more stable. So both the problems were solved. And then we also added some of the impossible things which you can dream of, uh, whether you need a redundancy, whether the health parameters are going to be OK with respect to one channel, or whether you need two channels, and one thruster is OK, or whether you need two thrusters, you know, n number of things. We keep on imagining. Uh, I think ISRO team has spent a lot of time in imagining uh, all the kind of failures and then they have made the entire thing uh, paka. So yeah. the result is that we, I was talking to some people in uh, ISRO, I personally believed that they never had any apprehension about the success of Chandrayaan 3. Of course, but like anybody else having written an exam and who will get a first rank, still will be under tension till he gets to know the result of it. Okay. My so colleague, kind of India Today's editor, in my, uh, editorial all. director for publishing, Raj Chingappa, has a question for you. Raj. Uh, firstly, uh, hello, uh, Mr. Namin Narayan. It's been a long time, Dr. Oh. Namin Narayan, speaking to you. Always have great regard for you. And uh, my question is this. It, uh, you know, very interestingly, in Chandrayaan 2, we had uh, five thrusters uh, guiding the lander. In Chandrayaan 3, we reduced, took off one of them, the middle one, and had four thrusters. And by the way, you build a lot of these liquid fuel engines yourself at some point, uh, and these are derivatives of what you've done. How critical was that decision to take off the fifth engine and just keep four? Well, uh, Raj Shingapa, I am very happy to meet you uh, in this conversation. I don't know whether you recall on the occasion where we met in the court of law in Trivandrum. I don't know whether you remember that. And, yes. Uh, <laughs> so that is the occasion I remember. And uh, beforehand also we were working together for the Mahendrigiri project. Correct. Wherein, uh, you know, we were talking about lion-tailed monkeys and... Uh, uh, <laughs> And of course, the lion tailed monkeys vanished because the Mahendrigiri name itself is a misnomer. Uh, the, the place where it is called Mahendrigiri is not really Mahendrigiri, it is Potihai Malai. So, there also I was clarifying uh, your doubts. 
then in the court we met and then afterwards uh, I got vanished in the different place, you got vanished in another place where we were not in touch with each other. It was a sweet memory, I am just recalling. But I don't know whether you ever thought of this guy who is in the court of law will ever be responsible for developing uh, <laughs> these kind of things and uh, put in slow into a yeah, good shape, I don't know. But anyway, uh, honestly, uh, the decision to make the uh, thrusters, uh, these things were uh, de designed, uh, failure modes were analyzed and uh, we had a weight budget, uh, they had a weight budget. I should say I always identify myself with ISRO even today. So they had a weight budget, within that they have to play around and then uh, they had required margins for this. So it was not a difficult decision to make but uh, they checked everything and then they, they took a decision. But anyway, Raj Shankapa, I am very happy having uh, met and talked to you in this occasion. And happy to see you too, Doctor. Yeah, thank you. Old, thank you so much. Old friends who've crossed paths. <laughs> yes. One yes. of them, you know, from <laughs> in Israel, the other tracking all those stories, <laughs> trying to get more stories. So very nice to see this interaction between Nambi Narayan and Raj Chengapa. Incredible. I can imagine you go back many, many years mm -hmm. and you've tracked the entire path of his career. Yes, it? yes. And uh, watched him actually build uh, the liquid fuel engine, the Vikas, yeah. which did us proud, which is the that, mainstay that's for right. all our that, that, that major that's right. that's uh, yes. launchers today. We did have a sort of yeah, yeah, talks yeah. of my 30 years, years but that's camp. an old story. <laughs> Nambiji, what do you think India did right this time? Because the Israelis tried this, the Japanese did, the Russian Luna 25 tried to land as well in the south uh, pole of the moon. They didn't succeed. What did India do different which has led to this massive global success? I, I have an answer, but I don't know whether you will buy that answer. Please, please, tell uh, us your answer. I will tell you the failure of, uh, of course, I am not enjoying the failure, but uh, uh, the, the failure of uh, these countries which you mentioned could be because of their overconfidence on their own ability. And the success for the Indian mission is because of our carefulness in analyzing the whole thing and making sure that uh, this time we must win. There is a win-win. <laughs> winning is the only, only way to survive. So that, that is the only answer, but I can tell you, I, I, I see, okay, apart from that, let me tell you a general answer that anything can happen in space, a small mistake uh, can happen, which will be, see, for example, you count uh, some hundred uh, currencies, every time you count that hundred currencies are still there, but you will count as 99, and you don't know how this 99 comes in the picture. Now, th this will be oversight, honestly, but similar mistake even can cause tremendous damage to your uh, situation. So that is the only explanation I can give you. So one is overconfidence, another one is extreme carefulness. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Nambi Narayan, for joining us. Thank you for everything you've done for India over the years in this uh, space odyssey. It's an absolute pleasure to have had you with us. Thank you, sir.